In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Repent and believe in the Gospel. It's Lenten Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yermet, a selection of Don Bosco. Come back to the Lord with all your heart. Stay tuned. Come back. After Ash Wednesday of the 16th of February 2024, third day of our Lenten observance and participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Valerie Nota from Dublin, Ireland, who celebrated her birthday yesterday, takes for us the first reading. Victor Ochgbo from Abuja, Nigeria, celebrating his birthday tomorrow, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Katembo Muadiro Jinpo, a Komboni missionary working in West Pokot as he celebrates his priestly anniversary today. We would like also to remember in our prayers today our mother, Rose Nelson Faye, who celebrates her 85th birthday in New York, United States of America, also with her Dokowa and the Momo Ganda family in Sierra Leone, that the Lord may continue protecting and taking care of them. Let us pray. Show gracious favor, O Lord, we pray, to the works of penance we have begun, that we may have strength to accomplish with sincerity the bodily observances we undertake. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. Is such the fast that I chose? A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1 to 9. Thus says the Lord God, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgressions, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted, and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast you seek your own pleasures, and oppress all your workers. Behold, you all you fast only to quarrel, and to fight, and to hit with wicked fists. Fasting like yours... This day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I chose, a day for a man to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a rash, and to spread sack your cloth and ashes under him? Will you call this fast, and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I chose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the thongs of the yoke? To let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him and to not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rare guard. Then you shall call. And the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Psalm 51, verse 3 to 4, 5 to 6 AB, 18 to 19. The response is taken from Psalm 51, verse 19, 
BC. And the response is, A broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spawn. A broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spawn. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. A broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spawn. My transgressions, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. A broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spawn. For in sacrifice you take no delight. Bond offering from me would not please you. My sacrifice to God, a broken spirit, a broken and humble heart, O God, you will not spawn. A broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spawn. Gospel acclamation. It's taken from Amos chapter 5, verse 14. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 and 15. At that time, the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, can the wedding guest mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God for today focuses on one of the pillars of our Lenten observance. Remember, we are supposed to take care of these three pillars, that is fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. These three, and in fact, in the order in which they are put in the Gospel of St. Matthew, almsgiving is first, and then prayer is second, and then fasting is third. As though to say, our relationship with our fellow human beings is supreme. It comes first. And then we go to our relationship with our God, which is portrayed in prayer and fasting. But fasting somehow is also connected in the way we relate to one another. So, Jesus now wants to clarify this point in the gospel passage of today when he is asked about fasting. Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn? As long as the bridegroom is with them, the death will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Jesus is trying to reorient these people and make them understand that fasting is not just a ritual. Fasting has a purpose. It has a purpose of restoring a broken relationship with your God. Fasting is not just for your dad. Because people fast for diet, that fasting is there. People fast because they are trying to control their sugar and try to check the difference between a period of fasting and a period when they take something. So it is for health reasons. Now, that's not the fasting we are undertaking during this period of Lent. The fasting we are undertaking during this period of Lent is a fasting that makes me build a relationship with the bridegroom and in so doing, I get to have a better relationship with my fellow human beings. If that is not the case, then I will be wasting my time. 
That's exactly what the first reading talks about. There were people who were boasting in their ritualistic approach to fasting, saying, we fast and you do not notice. We put on sackcloth and you don't even see that we are the real Jews who fast noticeably. No, that's not what we want to do during this period. We want the fasting that affects the way we relate with one another and with our God. There is no way that I can claim to be fasting when I still hold grudges against my neighbor. That is not fasting. Listen to this. Behold, in the day of your fast, you take no knowledge of it. Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. That's not fasting. The fasting that shows stinginess, the fasting that has no regard for another human being is a waste of time. If this Lenten fast is not going to improve the way you relate to your fellow human beings, you are wasting your 40 days. We have 37 days to repair this. This is the third day. And in order for us to repair the way we relate to one another, we are not just going to fast from food, which is also part of it, but we are also going to fast from gossiping. There are people who can't manage their lives without gossiping. Now, restrain yourself. Deny yourself of that gossiping. Because when you do that... You are doing favor to your neighbor. You are doing favor to your God. There are some people who just enjoy the pain of others. There are others who are bent on destroying the marriages of other people and they enjoy it. When they go out with another married woman or another married man, the Lenten period is supposed to make you make me fast from such an attitude. But I say, no, I won't do this. No, I won't offend my neighbor. I won't offend my brother because I am a believer. And my being a believer is not something that is tested only when I am caught. No, even when people don't know about something, I give up on that and I say, Lord, it is with you that I am relating. During this period of Lent, I am going to train myself because Lent is industrial attack for heaven I'm going to train myself to stop this habit there is a drunkard out there who is saying I am fasting everything else but not beer then you are not fasting there is a chain smoker out there who is saying I am not going to eat any food but I am not going to stop smoking then you are not fasting enough there is somebody there who just can't go home early. But fasting, just chilling with friends, when he has a family, she has a family to take care of. And if you are going to continue with that habit, you are not fasting enough. God wants your good, and he wants you to choose life and not death. The life you have been living so far is a life of death. And you can come out of that by making a choice through character fast, through emotional fast, through certain fasting that affects your inner self in order to transform yourself and the world out there. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Friday to you. Thanks be to God. No.